Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear viewers, uh, this episode, uh, with this episode, we start off with a new topic, and this is the fifth topic in the series. And uh, this topic actually relates to the collection of the Quran as ascribed to the Caliph Ali. Anhu. Now, uh, the collection ascribed to Ali, the collection of the Quran ascribed to Ali is discussed both in Sunni sources and in the Shiite sources. So, inshallah, what we will do in this, in this series, in these episodes which relate to this topic, we shall analyze uh, both these sources separately. We shall discuss the Sunni sources, the way they describe the collection of the Quran uh, attributed to the Caliph Ali, and then we shall discuss the Shiite sources. And Obviously, we shall keep uh, on analyzing both these narratives uh, the way they have been, uh, the way, the way they, I'll, I'll present them before you. So we'll first complete the Sunni topic and then the Shiite topic and then we shall draw an overall conclusion. Now, in this particular first episode, uh, I'm going to first narrate or read out before you the uh, narratives which are ascribed uh, in, in this regard regarding the collection of the Quran ascribed to the Caliph Ali Rizal Anhu. And also, I shall look at some of the existing interpretations of, uh, of these, uh, uh, these narratives. And inshallah, in the next uh, session, we shall then uh, see how these uh, interpretations and these narratives have to be analyzed. Now, the, as far as the Sunni sources are concerned, we shall begin with the Sunni sources. As far as they are concerned, uh, four people have uh, been ascribed. Uh, four people actually narrate this collection. And I'm going to read out each of these uh, representative narratives, uh, each of these four people. And uh, the first of them is by Ali Anhu himself, and it has been reported by Al Haskani in his Shawahid al Tanzil. And the words are actually Abdi Khair uh, reports uh, from him, and the words are An Abdi Khair An Ali, Annahu Ra'a min al Nasi Tayra in the Wafati Nabi, uh, in the Wafati Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Fa Aksama Allah Yada ala Zahri Hirida, Hatta Yajma al Quran. فَجَلَسَ فِي بَيْتِهِ حَتَّى جَمَعَ الْقُرْآنِ فَهُوَ أَوَّلُ مُصْحَفٍ جُمِعَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ جُمِعَهُ مِنْ قَلْبِهِ وَكَانَ عِنْدَ آلِ جَعْفَرِ So Abdi Khair reported from Ali عنه, that when he saw people in despair and frustration at the death of the Prophet, he swore that he would not wear his cloak on his back until he had collected the Qur'an. Then he sat in his house and collected the Qur'an. So it was the first Musaf in which the Quran had been collected, collected from his heart. And this Musaf is with the descendants of Jafar. So this is what uh, Abdi Khair reports from Ali Rizal Anhu. Uh, the second person to have reported a narrative in this regard vis-a-vis uh, -vis the collection of the Quran ascribed to the Caliph Ali is Yaman. And this narrative also has been recorded by Al-Haskani in his Shawahid al-Tanzil. And the words are an Yaman qal lamma qadiba nabi aqsama ali aw halafa alla yada ridaa ala zahrihi hatta yajma al quran bain al lawhain falam yada ridaahu ala zahri hatta jama al quran the words are uh, al yaman says when the prophet died ali swore or made a pledge that he would not put on his cloak on his back until he had collected the quran between two covers so he did not put on his cloak on his back until he had collected the Qur'an. Now the third person uh, to have uh, narrated in this regard is uh, Ikrama. And this uh, narrative has been recorded by uh, Ibn Zurais in his Fazail al-Qur'an. And the words in this regard are An Ikrama fi ma ahsabu qala lamma kana ba'da bayati Abi Bakr radhi ta'ala anhu qa'ada Ali ibn Abi Talib fi bayti faqila li Abi Bakr قد كره بيتك فأرسل إليه فقال أكرهت بيتي فقال لا والله قال ما أقعدك أني قال رأيت كتاب الله يزهد فيه فحدثت نفسي أن لا ألبس رضائي إلا لصلاة حتى أجمعه فقال أبو بكر فإنك النعم ما رأيت قال محمد فقلت له ألفوه كما أنزل الأول فالأول قال لو لو اجتمعت الإنس والجن على أن يؤلفوا ذلك التاليف ما استطاعوا قال محمد أراه صادقا إكرمة said after people had pledged their allegiance to Abu Bakr Ali sat in his house so Abu Bakr was told he is averse to pledging allegiance to you he then sent for Ali and asked him do you dislike pledging allegiance to me Ali replied by God no Abu Bakr no he said no Abu Bakr then asked what kept you away from me Ali replied I saw that additions were being made in the book of God, and I said to myself that I would only wear my cloak to go out for any of the prayers 
until I have collected it. Abu Bakr then remarked, What a good opinion you have formed. Muhammad ibn Sirin said, I asked him, Did they compile the Quran according to its sequence of revelation? He replied, If all men and jinn get together to arrange it in that sequence, they would not be able to do so. Muhammad ibn Sirin said, I considered him to be correct in forming this opinion. Now, the fourth person to have recorded a narrative in this regard is uh, Muhammad ibn Sirin. And this narrative has been uh, recorded by Ibn Abi Daud in his uh, Kitab al-Masahif. And as I said, this has been uh, reported by Muhammad ibn Sirin. Uh, so the words are, And Muhammad ibn Sirin قال, لما توفيا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أقسم علي أن لا يرتدي بردائن إلا لجمعة حتى يجمع القرآن في مصحف ففعلا فأرسل إليه أبو بكر بعد أيام أكرهت إمارتي يا أبو الحسن؟ قال لا والله إلا أني أقسم أقسمت أن لا أرتدي بردائن إلا لجمعة فبايعه ثم رجع قال أبو بكر لم يذكر المصحف أحد إلا أشعس وهو اللين الحديث وإنما رأوه حتى أجمع القرآن يعني أتم حفظه فإنه يقال للذي يحفظ القرآن قد جمع القرآن So Muhammad ibn Sirin said when the Prophet died Ali swore that he would not wear his cloak un, uh, except for the Friday prayer until he had collected the Quran in a Musaf. He said and he did so. Then after some days Abu Bakr sent for him and said are you averse to pledging allegiance to me O Abu, Abu al-Hasan? He replied by God the truth is that I had sworn not to wear my cloak except for the Friday prayer. He then pledged allegiance and returned. Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr from here, I mean, is Abu Bakr ibn Abi Daud, who's the, uh, he's the uh, author of this book. So the end of this narrative actually is a comment by Abu Bakr ibn Abi Daud himself. So Abu Bakr ibn Abi Daud had said, the only person who has mentioned the word Mus'haf is Ash'as, and he is Layyun al-Hadith. Others have narrated the words, until I collected the Quran, which means that, of course, not, not the fact that uh, he had collected between two covers, but as it goes on to explain, that which mean that he had finished memorizing it because he who has memorized the Quran is also called he who collected it. So the word Jamal Quran is according to this, according to his comment by Abu Bakr ibn Abi Dawud means that it also means to memorize the Quran. Viewers, now we come uh, to the existing uh, interpretations of these uh, four narratives or uh, perhaps we might not be finding all the uh, interpretations regarding all these uh, narratives, but whatever we find regarding these four narratives uh, vis-a-vis our uh, 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 previous scholars are concerned, I'm going to just summarize uh, those existing interpretations before you and even the critique which some of them have made on these narratives. Uh, Ibn Hajar, yes, uh, while commenting uh, on the narrative of Ibn Sirin, quoted by Ibn Abi Daud, says that it is weak because of its inkita, and Ibn Hajar has recorded this in his Fatul Bari, which is the Shah of uh, Sahih al-Bukhari. And it, he says that, and if it is considered to be correct, then it means that the word collection or jama means memorization. He goes on to say that the words, Hatta jama'atuhu bain al which means that I, until I collected it between two tablets, which occur in certain text of this narrative, are additions from the narrator. So he says that actually the fact that the collection between two uh, tablets uh, the, these words are not uh, the original words, they are being reported by a, by a narrator. Uh, Ibn Hajar, uh, he is also of the view that what has been narrated from Abd Khair is more correct and therefore to be relied upon. And then he actually has commented that, that he thinks that this is not that, the, not, not that sound and what has been uh, narrated by Abd Khair is, is more sound. And he is act perhaps he's also re actually referring to the narrative uh, which I'm just going to read out, and this is found in Ibn Abi Dawud's uh, Kitab al-Masahif, and the words are: An Abdi Khairan Ali radiyallahu anhu qal Rahimullah Abu Bakr wa huwa awwalu man jama' bain lawhain. So Abdi Khair reported that Ali said, "May God have mercy on Abu Bakr. He was the first to collect the Quran between two covers." So basically, you can see that Ibn Hajar is of the view that basically uh, this refers to a memorization of the Quran and the person who has just mentioned the word Mus'haf is Ashras, who is Layn al-Hadith, who is not sound in Hadith. So his opinion is that it was actually 
uh, oral collection or a memorization by the Caliph Ali and does not refer to a written collection. Uh, Ibn Kasir in his Fazail Quran is also very similar in his approach and he also thinks that it is uh, perhaps uh, it refers to an oral collection or a memorization by the, by the Caliph Ali. So he says that there is in Kita in this narrative which is obvious because uh, we know that Ibn Sirin is not contemporaneous to the events which are described by him and uh, we are obviously referring to the, to the interpretation of, this, uh, of these two scholars vis-a-vis uh, Ibn Sirin's na- narrative. So he says that uh, the word jam, which the narratives attribute to Ali, uh, refers to memorization and not to a physical collection. He gives preference to what Abu Bakr ibn Abi Dawud himself has said, that no one except Ash'as has reported the word Musaf. And he is Laynul Hadith, as we have just uh, referred to. And he, and he says that the words which have been narrated are Hatta, aj, hatta uh, Ajmal Quran, which, implying, uh, which implies that I completed its memorization because the word uh, Yahfizul Quran mean Qad uh, Jama' al Quran, which means that the word Hafaza or Hafaza means to, to memorize the Quran. His reason for this preference is that no one has reported the word, uh, has reported from Ali uh, whether in the alleged chronological order. I mean, his his preference for this opinion is that no one has reported a musaf uh, from uh, Ali in either the alleged chronological order because we know that it is said that Ali had collected the Quran in, in its, its chronological sequence. So he comments by, on this by saying that since no one has reported any chronological collection or in any uh, other order, not neither in the chronological order nor in any other order, so we will not uh, we will not believe this. He says that there are certain masahif whose script is attributed to Ali but are written the way the Usmanic masahif uh, or the Smalik Musaf is written, and some of them carry the words Katabahu Ali ibn Abu Talib, which is a stark grammatical error. He says that this is, since this is a grammatical error, and uh, it cannot be, it is beyond the imagination, our imagination, that a person like Ali would have made this mistake because the actual words should have been Katabahu Ali ibn Abi Talib, whereas the actual words are Kataba Ali ibn Abu Talib. So he says that this is beyond Ali to have uh, made this this. Uh, uh, this, this grammatical mistake and hence he says that uh, this ascription uh, to certain masahib which say that ha- they have been written by Ali it is extremely doubtful. Uh, now as far as Zurqani is con- con- concerned he says in his uh, Manahil al-Irfan he says while, while com- uh, commenting on the narrative of Ikrama. Now we, had, uh, we have just seen that scholars like Ibn Hajr and Ibn Kasir they have actually commented uh, on the uh, narrative of Ibn Sirin, and whilst they have pointed out that the narrative is broken, and they have seen, they have, they have made this comment that although it's not reliable, but at best what it can mean is that it refers to a memorization of the Quran by Ali and not to a written collection. Now, Azurkani, while commenting on the narrative of Ikrama, says that it was a written collection, and like other collections, it was a personal collection and did not possess the correct characteristics of the one collected by Abu Bakr and referred to earlier. So in, in, in the, an Azurkani's opinion, it was actually a written collection. It was not an oral collection. He says that it was, uh, it was a personal collection which Ali had made. To this Abu Shahba in his Al-Madkhal, uh, he adds that the narrative of Ibn Sirin also does not say that Ali was the first to collect the Quran. So Abu Shahba in his Al-Madkhal is actually commenting on Ibn Sirin's uh, narrative and he says he's not the first person to have collected the Quran. Hence, it can be construed to mean that it was a personal collection like many others. So why should we say that it was the first collection? It was a, it was a collection uh, which many people had made personally. So Ali was one of, one of them. So this is what the opinion of Abu Shahba is. Now let us look at the view of some of the uh, Western scholars in this regard who have also commented on this collection. So Shwali, uh, who is uh, obviously the student of Maldike, uh, is skeptical uh, of the collection of the Quran made by Ali. He is not, he is not, uh, he is not rel- regarded to be reliable. He says that the sources which mention these narratives are mostly Quranic commentaries or books of history which have been influenced by Shiism. So this is his first critique. And he says that all these narr- narratives are subjective and contradict strongly established historical incidents. The narratives mention the collection of the Quran by Zayd or later in the time of Usman do not mention any collection by Ali. So he says that since we find uh, other collections uh, which were before Ali, we do not find any reference to this, this uh, collection. Or if, if it was the first collection, then obviously Abu Bakr should have 
made a reference to this collection, but this is uh, this does not exist. Also, Ali himself does not allude to his collection neither in time of his own caliphate nor earlier, and it is certain that the Shiites never had any Quran collected by Ali. So this is what Shawli is 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 commenting. He further says that it is not possible to arrange the Quran in its chronological sequence in such a short span of time. And if it is supposed that the time was enough, then the sheer stupendous nature of the task uh, makes it very improbable that it was undertaken uh, It was undertaken as Muhammad Sallallahu himself had mixed old revelations with new ones in the Quran he was uh, directed to compile. So surely he is making this comment and Obviously, he's made this comment in his Geshkhikhte, this Quran, which is the uh, history of the Quran, which uh, he has revised, uh, uh, re revised copy by his own teacher, uh, Theodore Noldike. It is because of this impossible nature of the task that we find no details of the surah lists until after quite some time. So he says that this is again the, the, the list of surahs in which uh, people think that Ali had compiled the Quran in its chronological sequence or its revelatory sequence. They are found much later. They have come up much later. They were never uh, ever presented by Ali himself or his immediate in his immediate era. Moreover, the first six surahs of Ali's Quran, as given by Al Itqan, do not match all the available chronological lists. He concludes that he had made no such collection and concedes that all this criticism does not negate the fact that Ali could have a pers could have had a personal collection like other companions. So he is skeptical of the fact that it had any any value. Uh, other than the fact that it could have been a personal collection. So in spite of raising all these questions which I have just presented before you, he says that at best what, can be, what we can surmise is that he had a personal collection. Uh, that too, which is uh, what he said is at best, he's, uh, he said. Otherwise, in the first place, his primary opinion is that there was no such collection which Ali could have made. Now, uh, let us also uh, uh, find what Yaqubi, the famous historian, has said in his uh, Tariqul uh, Yaqubi. Now, as you can see, viewers on uh, on the screen uh, being displayed before you, uh, there is a whole chart of uh, of the arrangement of the Quran, which, according to uh, Yaqubi, um, that Ali had collected after the death of the Prophet. It was right after the death of the Prophet he had collected, and it was brought over by him on a camel, and it had seven parts. He then gives details of the surahs each part consisted of, and the, at the end of each part was written the total number of its constituent surahs. So uh, you, you can see these seven parts being displayed before you uh, uh, in the, on the screen. And these seven parts contain various numbers of, of surahs and uh, all of them uh, have, uh, if you can see, uh, it, it's, 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 they, they've given this, this name that this is Juz 1, Juz 2, Juz 3, Juz 4, Juz 5, Juz 6 and Juz 7, which means that part 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 5, 6 and 7. Uh, now you can see that uh, all these seven uh, uh, juz or adza or seven parts, they, they have 886 verses. Uh, the strange thing is that each of them has 886 verses and they are made up of different surahs of the Quran. Now, um, as uh, specified uh, in the chart, you can you see uh, they have 886 surahs and you can also see that part 1 has 16 surahs, part 2 has 15 surahs, part 3 has 17, part 4 has 15, uh, part 5 has 16 and 6 and 7 also have 16 surahs. So although the verses are equal, they have been equally arranged in all these parts, but we find that uh, each part have various number, uh, the, the number of surahs in each part is different. Now, as far as uh, interpreting what Yaqubi has put forward, uh, uh, let me first present what Jeffrey in his uh, materials for the text of the Quran has, has said. Uh, he says uh, that there are a total of 109, uh, um, there are a total of 109 surahs and th there are some missing surahs. So Jeffrey's primary criticism on this list is that uh, it does not display the complete 114 surahs of the Quran. And he points out that Surah Fatiha, Surah Ra'ad, Surah Saba, Surah Tahrim, and Surah Alaq, they are, they are missing. And we have five uh, surahs which are missing. So, and he further goes on to criticize this arrangement and says that it cannot be relied upon. And the gist of his uh, criticism is that, number one, it is dependent on the surah division of the Usmanic text, which Ali's codex was hardly likely to follow. So this is what he says, that it was hardly likely that Ali would have followed the same surah division as was found in the Usmanic text. 
The second point of this critique is that this arrangement is in contradiction to what other sources say that Ali had collected the Quran in its chronological sequence. So why should this be believed? And the third uh, criticism that he makes is that the, uh, the list itself lacks accuracy. So part one which says that it consists of 16 surahs actually has 15. Part su uh, two which says that it is ha has uh, 15 surahs, it actually has 16. And part three which is said to have contain 17 surahs actually has only 16. And part seven which is said to contain 16 surahs actually has 15. So it is again a, a discrepancy which has, he has pointed out. Uh, Shawli is of the opinion that the list was probably formulated in the Umayyad period, much later. This is what uh, Shawli says, and again, he, while saying this, obviously, he's doubting the historicity of this, uh, this uh, list which is given by Yaqubi. Uh, now, Mahmud Ramiyar, he says that this list is dubious and reflects an effort on the part of the author to arrange the first seven surahs of the sub of the Quran in seven groups and looks to be an effort by someone in the third century. So this is what Ramiyar says. And when counting the words and verses of the Quran had come in currency. So he says that since in the third century, it was a very common practice to, to count how many words and how many phrases and sentences uh, does the Quran consist of. So it seems it was a it was an endeavor in that time. It took place in that time. And um, uh, this is what he has surmised in his Tariq al-Quran, Mahmud Ramiyar. Uh, Marifa, Abdul Hadi Marifa, in his At-Tamheed fi Ulum al-Quran, he, uh, he says that this arrangement is a concoction, it's a, it's a fabrication, and he asserts that it is against the consensus of scholars according to whom the sequence of Ali's Mus'haf was chronological. So in, since in his opinion, it was a chronological uh, collection, and it is totally against that, uh, this, this list is totally against that chronological collection, and hence it cannot be relied upon. He also says that it is an effort to arrange the Quran in seven equal parts, uh, which each, with each part having 886 verses. So this is something uh, which these, uh, these scholars have uh, put, put forth, and hence they do not accept uh, that what Al-Yaqubi has presented as a probable uh, sequence of Ali's uh, Mus'haf, uh, these scholars have rejected that. Uh, we see that the Western scholars have also rejected that, and even scholars like Ramiyar and Abdul Hadi Marfa, who are both exponents of uh, the Shiite thought, they too uh, reject this list. Now, there's one more thing that uh, needs to be uh, presented before you before we close these existing interpretations, and uh, in the next session, inshallah, we'll analyze them. And this is a narrative by Ibn Nadim, and he has recorded something uh, about uh, the uh, narrative of uh, 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 the, the Codex of Ali Rizat Allah Anhu. And Ibn Nadim in his Al Fahrist has recorded this narrative, and this narrative is by Abd Khair, and it is uh, Abd Khair actually reports this from Ali himself. So the words are an Abdi Khair and Ali alayhi salam and Nahur Ah min and Nas Taira in the Wafat in Nabi. Fa Aksama and Lagada and Zahrihi Rida Hatta Yajmal Quran. Fa Jalasa fi Baiti Salasa Ayyam Hatta Jamal Quran. Fahuva Avulo Mosafin Jumia fi Hil Quran min Kalbi. Vakan al Mosaf in the Ahli in the Ahlil Jafar. Ahli Jafar. Varaitu Anna fi Zamanina in the Abi Yala Hamza al Hassani Rahamahullah Mosafan. قَدْ سَكَتَ مِنْهُ أَوْرَاكٌ بِخَطِّ عَلِي إِبْنِ أَبِي طَالِبْ يَتَوَارَسَهُ بَنُو حَسَنْ وَاللَّهُ مَرِّ الزَّمَانِ وَهَذَا تَرْتِيبُ الصُّوَرْ مِنْ ذَلِكَ الْمُصْحَفِ And uh, as the last word says that this is the arrangement of the Mus'haf but we have find nothing uh, beyond this uh, narrative or this, these, uh, beyond this, these lines, anything which actually describes this, this uh, sequence. So translation would be that Abdul Khair, uh, Abdul Khair reports from Ali that when he found people uh, were in a state of frustration and despair at the time of the pro uh, Prophet's death, he swore that he would not take off his cloak from his back until he had collected the Quran. So he sat in his house for three days until he had collected the Quran. He sat in his house for three days and he collected the Quran, wrote it out in, in three days. And then the narrative goes on to say, it was the first Musaf in which the Quran was collected from his heart. This Musaf was safely lodged with the family of Jafar, and in my times, this is what he says, in my times, the narrator says, that I saw a Musaf written by Ali uh, in the custody of Abu Yala. So uh, this is actually Ibn Nadim saying this, that uh, in my times I found this in, in the custody of Abu Yala, Hamza al Hassani. And owing to the passage of time, some of the pages were missing, and it was found with the family of Banu Hassan, which is obviously the son of uh, Hazrat Ali. And the, the arrangement of surahs in this Musaf was as follows, and then there is a, there's nothing. 
although it is say that this is the this is the arrangement of the musaf but there is a there is a gap there is an absolute empty space and this arrangement uh, is not described there so we have this this uh, missing part in this narrative now jeffrey in his material says while commenting on ibn nadim's narrative that the probability is that the reference is to a copy of the osmanic text made by uh, made by or for ali rather than to his own pre osmanic text so he says that this uh, at best is uh, as uh, is actually a copy of the osmanic text made by or for ali so uh, this is uh, this is something what he has surmised so viewers in this session we have seen how these four uh, for these four uh, narratives all obviously find that not all of them uh, not all of our existing scholars have commented on all the four uh, narratives but we find that ikrama's narrative we find uh, uh, that uh, the narrative which is uh, ascribed to ibn sirin they have been uh, commented upon by our scholars uh, and they have either uh, critiqued it or they have rejected it or they have uh made this interpretation that uh, some of them say that it was actually a memorized uh, a collection which in, in in the mind of ali as a memorization and most of the others who who think that this uh, narrative uh, was of the category of a written thing they 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 are skeptical about that but again this is something which we will discuss in detail inshallah in the next session uh, for the moment or for this session i just wanted to present before you these four uh, narratives and the way they have been looked by our authorities aqulu qali haza wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisar al muslimina wal muslimat